when I say indirection, I mean it's just it's the ability to have direct control over the outcome, right? And you enforce the outcome through a contract, but at some point you give away control, you know, in terms of how that gets implemented. So that's a level of indirection. When it comes to staff, you, you could hire your own people and train them on, on VMware and put them in the data center and they're on your box. Or you could have a relationship with a provider that has those people. So you have to trust that they've hired people with the right skills that you know that will keep it running as if you had hired them yourself. So this concept of indirection is is you know not new. Um, and the issue is that technology Technology is moving very quickly. Information technology is moving very quickly, and even within the span of, of my career, it, you know, it used to be that you'd hire a programmer that w that was used to defining requirements, building the, the the system, running it and maintaining it, and doing all the changes all the time. Right? So you have sort of the heroic developer to application relationship it, that doesn't scale. And, and the only way that we can scale the, the architecture to build or to implement a relationship is to have multiples of all of those things interacting with each other all the time. So that I can switch providers out or I can you know, cobble different types of architectures together. Uh, I can build things where nothing exists you know, now because I have the time and the developer to be able to do that. So it, it becomes much more fluid. Um, and you know, it's a fact and also to the question of is the future of the IT professional, but that's it. I mean, it's, it's the ability to work in this highly flexible system of moving parts, uh, rather than you know associating yourself with a single technology or a single box for the rest of your life and riding it through to your retirement. <laughs> you know, it's a much more exciting opportunity actually to to be part of this you know uh, of, a, of an environment filled with choice and where you can be innovative, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're just writing code all the time. It means that sometimes you are, it means that other times you're, you're working with the business line, and, and you're, I mean, it's, it's an evolutionary possibility for the IT so profession. The future for internal IT, I think, is positive, uh, in a way, uh, with, with the cloudy future, <laughs> in that the, well, first of all, let me make clear. As I see the cloud, as I've said, it, it is an extension of, of outsourcing concepts, but it's also just a, an extension of data center concepts. It, you know, and who knows whether three or four years from now we'll still be using the word cloud. I think it is just uh, uh, the hybrid data center, where you have compute that runs inside, compute that runs outside, and processes that run in multiple places. So it's just an extension of that. As a result, we still need solution architects and and you know, higher level architects in the organization to determine how those technical capabilities fulfill the business architecture needs. Um, so what will happen, of course, is that maybe, maybe people will be doing less direct coding in some elements of their environment. But that's true today. I mean, we, we have outsourcing agreements with, you know, with multiple partners that provide code for us, and we're doing perhaps less of that. And over time, the IT professional's job has has, lived in, has raised to different levels of abstraction, where you're thinking more in terms of, of architecture and models and and uh, component functionality, and, and you're starting to think more, you know, as a as a building architect would have thought at the end of the Middle Ages, instead of just cutting individual pieces of stone, you had in your mind the total end goal of where you were going. Stone cutters didn't go away; they just were functioning in a different environment. Now, but the positive side of all of this is that if it's true that the cloud is a successful place to put commodity IT, then a lot of the older applications and the, the legacy stuff that internal IT professionals spend the majority of their time maintaining and changing moves outside the organization. And then that frees them up to do more inventive, innovative things, maybe some of its legacy modernization to move off of those old platforms and into new environments. So in a way, it's, it's a way of jettisoning those things that hold the IT professional back and creates the opportunity, if they're willing to take it, to do more interesting, higher level, more business integrated strategic things within their company. It's an opportunity.